What's up, guys? It's Thursday, March 16th, 9.54 a.m., and this is the crypto newsletter with some huge news announced over the past couple of days. So we have BlackRock CEO touts tokenization warns U.S. lagging in innovation. Underlying technologies in the digital asset space could have exciting applications for the asset management industry. He goes into saying in an annual letter to investors, he wrote about rising interest in the digital asset space over the past year even though bankrupt crypto exchange FTX really captured the spotlight. He called attention to faster, more efficient payments in India and Brazil and parts of Africa. India's UPI type of instant real-time payment system has become a roaring success as it is now one of the most widely used forms of payment in the country. And then PIX for Brazil evolved the way locals pay. By contrast, many developed markets, including the U.S., are lagging behind in innovation, leaving the cost of payments much higher. But I would say that that's about to change in July here, and I'll get into that next. But uh, now we have, he oversees, so if we go down, uh, specifically the tokenization of assets is an attractive use case for the BlackRock CEO because it points the chances of driving efficiencies in capital markets, shortening value chains, and improving costs and access for investors. He said BlackRock continues to explore the digital assets ecosystem with a special focus on aspects that would drive the most value to clients, like permission blockchains and tokenization of stocks and bonds. Huge, absolutely huge. Then if we go down, he says he believes the next generation for markets and next generation for securities will be tokenization of securities. There we go. Now we have the Fed coming out. This was today, this morning. Uh, says real-time payment service to launch in July. So the push has been for all these individual countries to update their domestic payment systems and announce and come out with instant payment systems and upgrade their their domestic payment systems in order to have the end goal, which is connecting all these domestic instant payments instant payment systems with CBDCs and foreign exchange interoperability and conversion baked within it. So we're seeing the 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 train tracks being laid out for that. And it, it's all happening this year. So the US Central Bank has announced its instant payment system is set to go live in less than four months, giving citizens a new prompt settlement and clearing service for their transactions. Um, They're going to kick off their formal certification process for participants in the first week of April, which will be followed by a trial program in order to get ready for sending live transactions through the systems. Full operations will begin in July. So they said we couldn't be more excited about the forthcoming FedNow launch, which will enable every participating financial institution, the smallest to the largest and from all corners of the country to offer a modern instant payment solution. Then if we keep going down, Vanek said that this may be the first leg into CBDC rails slash reset. Crazy. Um, That was from the director of digital assets strategy at Vanek said the timing of the service launch was suspicious considering multiple U.S. bank failures. I'm surprised that um, this guy from Vanek is coming out kind of calling it out here because it's very much coincidental, right? Maybe the first leg into CBDC rails slash reset, 100%. They're going to be kind of launching their new updated instant payment systems. Then we'll have the CBDC wholesales on the back end. And then you'll see that reset where now the interlinking of all these domestic CBDCs via a bridge, common settlement, digital asset like a xrp like a xlm or like a hbar etc so now if we keep going down crazy crazy times the fed now service is seen as an alternative to central bank digital currencies which are virtual currencies backed and issued by the central bank the u.s treasury is considering the consequence consequences of issuing a cbdc while lawmakers are still divided on the matter The service will launch with a solid set of clearing and settlement functionality and other features will be added in future releases as the network expands. It's likely there is a role for cryptographically secured stablecoins, even if the U.S. eventually does issue a CBDC. And he said it creates a leading edge payment system that is resilient, adaptive and accessible. There we go. Then uh, yep, same kind of thing here. Let's see if there's anything kind of different. Nope, nothing different in that. But we, what we saw here is from Payment Infrastructure News, 
the Federal Reserve has confirmed that the ISO 222 based FedNow service will start operating in July 2023 and provided details on preparations for launch. Then if we keep going down, at launch, FedNow will introduce ISO 222 messages to instruct customer credit transfers, requests for payment and interbank liquidity transfers, as well as FedNow's system and accounting reporting messages. The Fed is using the SWIFT's My Standards platform to provide access to the FedNow ISO 222 message specifications and accompanying implementation guide. As far as interoperability is concerned, the Fed has already said our use of the ISO 222 standard, which is also used by the RTP network, will support routing interoperability. Where sending financial institutions that use both services can route payment messages over each service to reach participating receivers. To ensure the safety and security of the service, the Fed will offer message signing, a digital signing of messages to ensure authentication and validity of message content, and enhance fraud controls. Uh, allowing financial institutions to set a transaction limit lower than the maximum credit transfer limit, supporting negative lists and reporting of fraud in the network, and to Fed now. So we're seeing all of this come together, perfect timing, lining up with the narrative. And then we saw Salesforce taps into NFTs through a suite of new Web3 products. The cloud services giant is helping companies integrate NFTs to deepen their relationships with customers. So you're seeing all these kind of providers of software kind of tapping into these Web3 tools and being able to offer them to their clients. So we're going to see all this stuff be integrated within all our, you know, our favorite companies, all our favorite product services that we love in the next year or two. I mean, we know the timeline as far as when we should see this kind of set in stone baked into our current way of doing things. 2025 is a key year, 2027, 2030, 2025, we should see a lot of this stuff kind of already rolled out and well on its way. So interesting times ahead. Now we see US lawmakers digging through crypto legislation for bipartisan winners. Ideas have gathered from the Senate and House. Lawmakers are trying to figure out what can get bipartisan support. So they're going through the process now of setting up these regulations. Basically, I do expect to see some regulations by the end of March or April before Amazon launches their NFT marketplace. So that's my thought on it. Also, right here, U.S. government using crisis to choke off crypto access to bank from Brian Brooks. The former acting head of the OCC said federal regulators are working together to, cre to keep crypto assets out of the U.S. banking system. Um, and that's obviously been the case here. Then if we go to the next thing, crypto legislation won't be sexy, Senator says, but it's needed soon. So lawmakers of both parties say crypto legislation won't be sexy or nor a crowd pleaser, but remains a near term focus ever since FTX. So they're using that crisis. And then also now with the event, everything else going on, they're using all that as a way to really just boot crypto out of the traditional system, or at least on the surface do that, right? We don't know what's happening behind the scenes as far as their talks, but, or the reason why they would be trying to do something like this. But uh, obviously they know that they're putting themselves at a disadvantage, whereas the rest of the world is kind of embracing this. So there must be something bigger at play here. So then if we keep going, we have Russians use Tether to send money to the West, evading san sanctions and KYC, Transparency International. So Russian banks may be cut off from the SWIFT International Payments Network, but despite wide-ranging international sanctions, money keeps flowing between Russia and the West. Brokers are ready to turn Russian rubles into foreign currency abroad in cash. So we go down here. That's another reason for the G20 to come out with this blanket of regulations that cover, you know, KYC, they cover the kind of the transparency and the reporting requirements of, uh, you know, these crypto companies like Tether. Uh, maybe they come out with the regulations that say, hey, you need to make sure you abide by the sanctions things or we're not going to accept your coin for, for trading or whatever that may be. So that's what I see really kind of gaining steam here is the, the KYC AML issues as well as the interoperability factor and the transparency. And obviously Tether hasn't had it for a very long time now. And we know Tether is the preferred way or preferred stablecoin of Russia, China, et cetera. And now we're getting more validation of that. 
So they're, we're going to see a crackdown. This is just another reason for them to crack down on it. Now let's keep going because we have SEC Chairman Gensler suggests again that proof of stake tokens are securities. So he's coming out with that same verbiage again. Then we have crypto long and short finding alpha and AI related crypto. So AI may be a theme worth exploring, potentially transform transformative in the way that cryptocurrency is, have been. Absolutely. Uh, so we already kind of have exposure to the AI sector of crypto with GRT, but there's definitely other ones that are out there. I haven't di dove deep on those ones, but um, AI is such game changer technology and, and, and paired it with blockchain uh, crypto, uh, it's game changer. So it's covering AGIX here, uh, Render, F uh, FET. So yeah, I was covering some of the uh, AI coins. Then to finish it off, we have some big news for Alliance Block. So Alliance Bar Block partners with ABO Digital for tokenized structured products. The duo will offer traditional finance investors a lower risk, compliant way to back crypto projects. So Alliance Block, a provider of blockchain infrastructure that bridges TradeFi and DeFi, has partnered with digital investment firm ABO Digital to offer institutional and retail investors a lower risk, compliant way of financially backing crypto projects through tokenization. The tie-in comes as tokenized assets continue to gain steam, with investment giant Hamilton Lane offering tokenized exposure to one of its funds earlier this year. So there we go. So Alliance Block is getting back into the game, baby. Uh, ever since that hack, I think they uh, airdropped the new tokens. I, I'm not sure the name of it, but uh, they're, they're coming back strong for sure. So that's going to be it, guys. That's it for the crypto newsletter. A lot of things happening, a lot of big things that we've been waiting for, like the FedNow service coming this July, less than four months away. We're seeing BlackRock CEO coming out again, touting the tokenization of assets to be game changer and having it underpin securities transactions and bond transactions, huge. Also seeing that we're seeing other companies really dive into providing the tools that all other companies need for kind of stepping into this Web3 space. Then we see US lawmakers really trying to get um, their hands around the crypto space, as well as we're seeing uh, Russia. And I think they're launching their digital ruble in uh, April as well, too. So there's a lot of things lining up with this end of March, April timeframe. And so far, the charts are looking very well in the higher timeframes. So we'll have to just, you know, continue to watch it every day, make sure everything's staying intact. So if you definitely want to get updated, you want to join the Discord, the link will be in the bio. Come join the Discord. Uh, we do basic updates for uh, free in there. But if you wanted to take it to the next level and get on the VIP, then once you get in there, uh, ask about the VIP plans and the pricing for that. And we can best situate you in, in the best place uh, going forward for the rest of the year. So that's going to be it, guys. That's it for the crypto newsletter. And I'll see you guys in the next video.